What is going on, ThemeCo fam? We've got an exciting one here for you today, introducing the external API integration. Now, what's an external API? Well, in the Internet of Things, you can connect to each other, and sometimes those servers allow you to grab just raw data, using it in your own app or web pages in our example. So here we've got a Pokemon. We're connecting to a Pokemon API here. And none of this is WordPress data. It's all connected through this API that I found. Um, now in this API, you can grab a list of Pokemon. You can grab a singular Pokemon and start getting attributes, images. This is ditto in this example. And so in this series, we're going to teach you how to use our tool and how to get up and started really quickly. Um, so first off, this new feature in Pro 6.4 and Cornerstone um, 7.4 and X 10.4. Um, when that is installed, we're going to go into Cornerstone settings and scroll all the way down to the advanced section. Now, I already have this turned on, but if you didn't, or when you first launch, you're going to press that, and after that, press update. But let's first go through the configuration check section. Now, there's a bunch of docs for you right here, but um, this is going to be essentially the visual docs that we're going to go through most of this. So if you're looking for the nuts and bolts, this is definitely where you want to go, especially um, once you get deeper down into this doc. And so uh, for the rest that's in this section, we have the, the allow list. Um, this is PHP regular expressions, and well, it can accept that. And you do have to start with the protocol. Um, the reason being, if you didn't, if I just had ThemeCo, I could do something like this. And that technically would pass validation. Um, so with that, when that is, so when you've pressed that and you've updated, if, when you go into Cornerstone, you're going to have a lot more new features. And so um, let's start right here. So, we're, well, first off, we have a number of different um, uh, return types that we can accept. We've got JSON, which is going to be probably your most common. Uh, XML, which most commonly for um, probably you guys is going to be like an RSS feed or just reading data. Um, we have a raw file, which um, the use case of that is that some just return straight up MP3. See that? Um, there's some extra processing to help you put it into something like the audio element. And so next up, YAML, more straightforward, CSV, um, get through all these. And then finally, we have the API tester, which is actually a prefab um, for you. If you actually scroll down to the advanced section, you're going to notice you have two more um, Elements. One's the API test we're looking at right here. The RSS feed was actually just this one. Um, this is using NASA, so it's very easy to um, share. So let's first go into a, a sample here. Let's find my looper provider. So if you're unfamiliar with looper providers, um, so we're right here, we're in grid. This is where I'm using to um, not necessarily loop through each item, but create the looper. And so when this is, when we've got enabled, you're going to see external API. Um, first off, we have run, which, as you can guess, it's either going to run it or not. And if that doesn't make sense, it's sometimes, so every update you're going to do, that's going to run to the request without it, right? So you might be setting up and you don't want this to incur either API charges or anything else. So next up, endpoint, which is just sort of your URL, but since um, you can, it's nice to reuse domains and stuff like that, um, you can also do something like that with adding on paths. And that just adds directly to it, so I could do something like that and that would be perfectly fine. So. Next up, uh, methods, um, HTTP methods for those in the know. Um, primarily, it's going to either tell you what to use, like for the API docs, um, but most likely you're going to use get or post because you're displaying stuff in Cornerstone for the most part. 
I personally have never used anything past delete um, ever. So uh, next up, headers. Um, pretty, um, for the most part, they tell you what to do in the docs. Um, so what's a header in general? So most common one would be something like application slash JSON. So you're, you're telling the endpoint to send you back this. Now this endpoint sends that back regardless and this, as you can see that nothing changed, so it's not using this at all, but some do. And next up, so we'll just delete it for now. Um, requests, so this is what extra parameters you would send to the API. So this is a good one because they actually use it. Some don't even need, don't have any parameters, but for ex so in this example, you can limit how many Pokemon you want to be returned back. So I'm only looping through three, as we'll see later, but um, it's set to 40 to send me 40 Pokemon back. And usually they just have limits in general. So um, usually you just got to be ready for it regardless. So return type, for the most part, it's JSON, what you're going to um, be expecting. And also to, new to this is that so sometimes you can be returned an object and that's actually what we're being sent so the actual array of Pokemon is in the results and you could see this actually here if I just did Pokemon so it gives you the count of how many Pokemon in general there are and this one's nice because it actually sends you the next URL to paginate um, so there's no previous, so this is the first one, which expected because we didn't send anything back, but you can see other um, requests. Let me s zoom this up. So you can see other requests that you could do. So offsets one limit, as we saw me using. So, and that, and so for get um, requests, if you remember going back here, this is a get request. So these attributes are going to auto convert to this format. It's like URL um, um, HTTP args is what it's called. So you don't have to, you can always just send this in the path right here if you didn't want to use this. Um, but I mean, this is, this is just nicer and you might want, but you know, do whatever um, you want to do there. You might, you know, even be using dynamic content and already have that sort of the args ready. So there's a use case there. Okay. So we've, we're looping through the results because that's, um, where the array is stored. If you were just returned just a straight up array, you wouldn't even need to use this. Just delete it. Next up, cache time. This is in seconds, but we have nice selectors for you, so you're not doing math. Um, of course, if you just were entering in breakout mode right here with Control Alt Beat B, and you could see that just the seconds conversion. You could also just use dynamic content there if you wanted. Follow redirect. Um, this is so sometimes URLs change, of course, and um, you can want to follow that to the next one I'd re recommend just having it on but um, you know if you're not if you want to be absolutely extra secure um, probably want to turn it off and then if an API does change you just you know got to be ready and update it um, timeout so when so when it's cached you know there's absolutely no load time right so like right here that that's instant right it's clearly not making an api request so this is so that if something isn't cached and a user is on um using your page it's gonna wait till the api is done right so you might want to just cut out um and you know not really get into too long of loading times even if it means, you know, just canceling the request. Debug mode, we're going to see that a little bit later in the API tester. Loop keys, something new, we're going to see that in YAML. So let's move on to RSS and just keep going through examples. Get you, um, just, yeah, get you started. So this, so the RSS feed 
is a prefab and we have parameters we're setting up for you just so um, to abstract it make it a little bit easier to digest so as I said this is the R RSS feed of NASA this gets plugged right into the endpoint right here also showing the beauty of just dynamic content and parameters um, if you wanted to just switch up something you know you can just change it right there and what's different from the other ones too is that so for an RSS or XML just in general you're usually have a top level root element um, for RSS it's RSS and then um, if you want to look at um, uh, tags in inside of the RSS it's almost for for XML sorry for RSS it's always going to be RSS then channel and then item is actually an array but they use the item tag and we'll get more into RSS or I mean XML in just a separate video this is we're just going to leave this as an overview for right now um, so you'll notice that um, this one is underscored by attributes um, XML is not really the same as you know JSON or YAML so to keep things more consistent if you're looking at attributes in an XML tag um, you're going to use that and then the actual name of the attributes URL in this case and then this is then piped in to each column is going to be the consumer here consuming nine items and just to so also showing off some dynamic inner dynamic content so that was the image key was just the key that we're going to use and we're passing that into DC looper field key is the arg of that and just like that we've grabbed it with out you know with while making use of parameters and up, um, abstract abstracting it so we went right along to raw file this one is a little more use casey but it came up in our one program and so it's file file returns the name um, this is then the file that's going to be the the URL path of it and so which the, I, I'm using mp3 here but it could be you know anything as a zip file it could also um, you could use a local file which would mean like the server path um, you might not that's also more use casey but you'd probably send that to like something else right you would send that to like another api maybe for example that needs to upload a file so same thing data key which is pretty much just going to be used on json and some some of the object based um, data formats this one's not one of them so we've looped that um which if you want to imagine the looper on this one it's you could also just use dynamic content um, as the API call so that would be right here we're gonna just, we're gonna go through setting up API globals later but that's how you'd access it there in dynamic content so I'm looping through just the file returned right which is just a URL since I didn't use the local file earlier and with that that outputs a source that I can use in the audio element and so this is just so my sample here is just sending out one mp3 file but this could be something like text-to-speech maybe it sends you just the raw mp3 and so that's what you would use right here F raw file or file return so YAML um, pretty straightforward um, this one does go through the loop keys so in YAML you can it can just be an array some most times it's um, a keyed object so loop keys the index 
now becomes, um, in this case, I'm looping through our themes. And so the index is the theme name or ID. And so last up, or we'll go through API Tester too. So CSV, um, if you've used the CSV looper in general, um, you'll notice the controls are just brought over there. So, and just to illustrate, so XML did not have what has headers, um, delimiter, um, data key, probably is not used unless um, CSV is like a key, va keyed value in an object you're getting sent. And with that, since this one had headers, we can use keys, uh, the headers as the keys. So this one had months, it's total sales. Um, this one is a sample for use in cornerstone charts that you'll probably see from me as well. So, and finally, API tester. This is where cornerstone sort of becomes more of a tool than a display. Um, but you could hypothetically just insert an API tester prefab and go from there because this is this one's good because it goes through errors too which none of those really did they're all expecting everything just go perfectly which might not be possible with what you're doing so right off the bat it kind of tells you just go to change me in the customize tab I'm just going to um, demonstrate that it's going to change like that and so if I grabbed, so let's pretend we're starting from scratch. I was going to grab something from there, but let's not even do that. So doesn't so in the Pokemon one, um, that's sort of where what it's expecting the endpoint to be. And then the path would be something like Pokemon, right? And there could be a whole bunch of different stuff. So you can already see it's... So even that's actually fine. So it actually gives you a list of API endpoints you can just use, which is kind of nice. Um, I wouldn't expect every one of them to do this, but um, right up at, at the top you have info, which is going to be like um, just like how much time and stuff it took. It's very development stuff. You probably just want to make sure you're seeing the response right here. Make sure that's good. And as another sample, we're doing Pokemon. And so now we're seeing what we used earlier, the results, right? We're looping through that as the data key, and we could even demonstrate that we're using that right by doing, uh, see, I, it was, wasn't results, it was results. And so with that, we've turned Cornerstone into a tool. Um, it might be different depending, it look differently depending on when you see this, but I recommend starting there. And in fact, in our next video, we're going to start there and start building some of this from scratch and just going through the process. So hope you liked it. I hope you're ready for a very exciting series. Um, much love. See you later.